Revered scholar Professor Mahmoud Mamdan is convinced that if the SPLA had contested the 2010 Sudan election, it would have defeated General Omar Bashir. Mamdan was speaking at a public lecture at Makere University in the wake of the post-South Sudan referendum. Garang came to Sudan, came to Khartoum in 2005. When he landed in Khartoum, there was a massive crowd of over a million people. They represented the entire diversity of Sudan, northerners, southerners, easterners, westerners. Everybody was there. The political class in Khartoum was shocked. How could this man from the south attract this <coughs> massive crowd? People who pin their hopes on him. How could this be? Journalists wrote that the only other event they had seen similar to it was Mugabe landing in Harare. The moment was nostalgic for an academic whose name evokes memories of the heydays when Makere University was a melting pot of debate and ideas. In a fully packed hall at the College of Computing and Information Sciences, Mamdan told a fervent audience that had the iconic leader Dr. John Garang not passed on, he could have won the election. However, Mamdan is also warning that instability could plague the fragile state because some militias in South Sudan were neglected in the final peace settlements and feel aggrieved politically. In South Sudan, the members of the broad base have kept their arms and they've kept their militias. Every important leader, political leader in the SPLM has his own militia. So what happens if you lose an election? What happens if you lose your ministerial position? Then you leave with your militia. What happens then? Last week, there was the incident, the case of General George Arthur. Renegade Lieutenant General Joe Arthur's insurgents in Jongle State and the Flashpoint oil town of Malakal left scores dead as recently as Saturday. Other militias like Gabriel Tanginye, Gatluak Guy and David Yao Yao continue to roam the vast South Sudan with arms. The former Herbert Lehman Professor of Government and Anthropology at Columbia University had earlier on said the split of South Sudan was driven by the post-September 11th era and the United States global war on terrorism. New Vision Chief Executive Officer Robert Kapshenga, while discussing Mamdan's paper, however said the late Tanzanian leader Julius Nyerere shaped the future of South Sudan. You're all obsessed with Nelson Mandela, and sometimes you never realize how much that man single-handedly shaped the history of the African continent. And that the thinking of people like John Garan and the positions that they take on nationhood, the progressive position, is largely influenced by their time and the thinking and the philosophy of Julius Nyerere. The South continues to be enveloped in conflict. However, President Salvaki has handed amnesty to those who surrender. Emam Taiziwa, NTV 11.